Question six is a gradient of the line question. Water is leaking out of two containers. The water started to leak out at the same time. The straight line shows information about the amount of water in container P. And the straight line Q shows information about the amount of water in litres in container Q. Work out the gradient of line P. So there's line P. Now first of all, gradient is another word for the slope of the line. And in order to find it, it's the change in the y-axis divided by the change in the x-axis or the rise over the run. First thing I'm going to notice about line P is the fact that it's a downhill line. So it's going to have a negative gradient. So I'm going to put a minus there, ready, so I don't forget. Now, in order to get the rise and run, you need to draw a right angle triangle from two points on the line that cross over the two solid lines on the axis. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to look. Right, there's one solid point. So I can go from that one. And I'm going to go down. No, they're all falling randomly on the grid. All randomly on the grid. So actually, my only two solid points are at the start and end of the line. Which makes life a bit easier, actually. So I'm going to draw that triangle in. And this has got a rise from 0 to 14. So it's got a rise of 14. And it's got a run of 40. Now the fact that it's not actually a rise, it's, it's a fall down, means that it's negative 14. But as long as you are aware that it's a downhill line, so it would be a negative gradient anyway, it's not such a big deal. So remember this is a calculator paper, so it's negative 14 divided by 40 and that's going to give you negative 0 0.35 and with regards to how those marks are allocated you get one mark for the right angle triangle and for showing that it's the rise over the run and you get the second mark which is your accuracy mark. Part B says one container will become empty first. Which container? You must explain your answer. So let's look at the lines. We're looking at which container gets empty first. Now empty means there's zero litres of water in the tank. This is the time it takes to get to zero. So it's whatever this one is here. So this belongs to line P. So P will be empty first. P will empty first. They want to explain the answer and that is because it is empty after 40 seconds and container Q empties at 50 seconds. So it's empty after 40 seconds and Q is empty after 50 seconds. Then part two asks how much water is then left in the other container. So after 40 seconds when it's empty you can get your ruler and read up at the 40 seconds mark to the other container read across and the answer is 2 litres and that's one mark for each. Question 7 is a pie chart question however it's more about using a pie chart it does not ask you to draw one don't be fooled into thinking it's asking you to draw a pie chart it isn't. So each year group in a school raised money for charity. The incomplete table and pie chart show some information about this. Complete the table. That is all they're asking you for. They're not asking you to complete the pie chart. They're asking you to complete the table. So, year seven, year nine. Okay, if I only had one of them missing, it would be easy because I could take all of these away from 900, but I haven't. The fact that they've given me an incomplete pie chart means I'm going to have to deal with the information there first. So they're telling me that year 7 is represented by 100 degrees. In order to work out what 100 degrees is worth, I need to work out 
how many pounds one degree represents. In order to do that, I take the fact that we are dealing with a pie chart here representing 900 pounds. So there's 900 pounds altogether, and that is represented by the full pie chart. So it's 900 pound divided by the 360 degrees. So you put that in your calculator and you end up with 2.5, which is £2.50. So £2.50 is what one degree equals. Now here I've actually got 100 degrees. So that's actually £250. So year 7 raised £250. Now I only have one missing, so I can take my total, which is 900, and I can subtract all of those added together. So I can take away the 250 from year 7. I'm going to put a bracket here. I'm going to take away the 250 and the 225 and the 125 and the 162 pound 50. And once I've done 900, take away all of that, that leaves me with 137 pounds and 50 pence. So that's one, three, seven, fifty. And that's your three marks. With regards to how these marks are divided, you get one mark here for showing the um, proportion with regards to the total and the pie chart. You get an answer mark for getting the year sevens right and an answer mark for getting the year nines right. That's your three mark question. Now, whilst I have emphasised they didn't want you to draw the pie chart, if they had wanted to, you to and you do not know how to draw a pie chart, I will show you how to calculate the size of the angle. So let's take, um, I don't know, year 10 for example. Year 10 raised £125. If I wanted to put those into the pie chart, I would need to find the £125 out of the total raised, which was 900 And once I've done that, I would then times it by 360. So that would give me 125 out of 900 which is that, times by 360 equals 50. So if I was drawing it, I would draw year 10 to be 50 degrees. It's a cumulative frequency question. Um, the cumulative frequency graph shows information about the heights of some hollyhock plants. That's hollyhock, not hollyhocks. Find an estimate for the median height, so that's part A. Now, generally, in a cumulative frequency graph, we're quite used to seeing them tell us how many plants that they looked at, but they haven't here, so I need to read that information from the graph. This is the highest point on the graph, and when I read what it is, it's 80. Well, it goes to there. I need to work out what the scale is of the axis. So here it goes from 60, and then there's two sort of five squares, and then it gets to, to 80. So it increases by 20, over a 10 increment period. So that means each little line is worth two. So that's 80, two, four, six, eight. So there's 88 people all, or plants all together. Now I want the median, which is halfway. So half of 88 is 44. So I want to first of all look for 44. So there's 40, 42, 44. I'm going to go across and I'm going to read down and that's going to give me 80 this is a different scale at the bottom it goes up by 10 in increments of 10 so it's 80 1, 2, 3 83 centimetres is the median now Part B wants me to work out an estimate for the interquartile range. And the interquartile range is the upper quartile, take away the lower quartile, where the upper quartile is three quarters and the lower quartile is one quarter. So keeping in mind that 44 is a half, 
In order to find the one quarter point, I need to go to 22. So there's 22. So I read across and down. And that's going to give me 75, 76, 77, 78. So my lower quartile is 78. Now for my upper quartile, which is 3 quarters, so I could add if I wanted 22 and the 44 together, which would give me 66. 60, 2, 4, 6. Draw across. Draw down. And that's ended up giving me 85, 86, 87. So I end up with 87 take away, oh, sorry, 87 take away 78. Um, if you are not very good at taking away, then don't forget this is a calculator paper and sometimes it's not worth the risk of getting something wrong. But 87 take away 78 is 9. So the interquartile range is 9. Now for part C they want you to find an estimate for the number of hollyhock plants taller than 90 centimetres. So this time I need to look for the 90 centimetre part that's there and I'm interested in reading up here. and across and what that gives me is 78 people so 78 people or plants sorry 78 plants however 78 is not my answer because this is telling me there are 78 plants smaller than 90 I want the plants bigger than 90 so it's going to be the full 88 plants take away the 78 plants that are smaller than 90 centimeters and that leaves me with uh, 10 plants that are greater than 90. With regards to mark schemes uh, here you get a B1 mark for just knowing how to find the median you get an M1 mark here for drawing the lines at the correct quartiles. So that's the 22 and the 26 line. And then here you get an answer mark. The grade bound, the mark scheme does actually accept anything from 10, uh, from 8 to 10, because you know you may have drawn lines to a different degree of accuracy. And here it is just a, oh, it's a two marker, so you get one mark for showing that you've used or identified that 78 coming off the 90. And then you get the second mark for having the answer correct. And here they'll accept 10 or 11, again, based on how accurate your graph was. Question 9 is a probability tree question. Um, with a slight twist actually on this one. So in a newsagent shop the probability that any customer buys a newspaper is 0.6. In the same shop the probability that a customer buys a magazine is 0.3. So straight away we're looking at two things here. Newspapers and magazines. Complete the probability tree diagram and here we have all the newspaper activity and here we have the magazine activity. So first let's deal with the newspapers. In the newsagent shop the probability that they buy a newspaper is 0.6. Buys a newspaper, 0.6. That means that the probability of them not buying a newspaper needs to be one takeaway, 0.6, which is 0.4. That's the newspapers dealt with. Now I need to look at the magazines. The probability that they buy a magazine is 0.3 buys a magazine 
0.3 does not buy a magazine 0.7 buys a magazine 0.3 does not buy a magazine 0.7 so for this you get two marks if you've got all six values correct you would get only one mark if you got two or more correct so if you only get one of them right then that doesn't count okay part B wants you to work out the probability that a customer will buy either a newspaper or a magazine but not both so I'm interested in the probability of newspaper or magazine and not both so not the same now there are two ways this could happen they could either buy a newspaper and does not buy a magazine so let's deal with that eventuality first buys a newspaper 0.6 and which we discussed earlier was times does not buy a magazine so 0.6 times 0.7 or, and remember or is plus, so it's that probability, or I'd be happy if they did not buy a newspaper, but that they did buy a magazine. So that would be 0.4 and times 0.3. So let's now go down here and deal with the actual working out. So my two options are 0.6 times 0.7 or 0.4 times 0.3 and this is a calculator paper so 0.4 times 0.3 is 0.12 and 0.6 times 0.7 is 0.42 I'm going to add those together and that's going to end up giving me 0.54. So that is the probability of buying either a newspaper or a magazine, but not, that should say both, but not both. With regards to mark scheme for this, it's a three marker. You get one mark for showing that or that you also get a mark for showing the whatever probabilities you've identified you're adding them together and then you get the third mark for the correct answer question 10 is a really tricky mean question not tricky mean as in tricky and mean but it's tricky and it's about the mean <laughs> jokes so, question 10. Daniela works in a shop. Daniela served 50 customers in the morning, 75 customers in the afternoon. The mean time to serve all 50 customers in the morning was 48.7 seconds. The mean time to serve all 125 customers was 50.2. Work out the mean time to serve the 75 customers in the afternoon. Now I've forgotten what they were talking about up there because there's a lot of information. So I know I'm talking about a morning and an afternoon. I know that in the morning there were 50 customers and there was a mean serving time of 48.7 seconds. I know that in the afternoon there were 75 customers and the mean is unknown. That's what I want to find out. The mean time to serve in the afternoon. What they have told me though is that all together there were 125 customers and they had a mean time of 50.2 seconds. So I need to use all that information to find out what the mean was over here. Now remember a mean is when you have the total of something divided by the number you have. So if you start with the mean and multiply it up by the number that um, it represents, then you'll end up with the total time. So let's find first of all the total time and that's going to be 
125 lots of 50.2 seconds. And when you do that, that gives you 6,275. So that's the amount of seconds that were served anyway. Now, I know exactly how many of those are accounted for in the morning. So I can do 6,275, take away my 50 lots of 48.7 and that equals 3,840 seconds. So that has left me with the afternoon seconds of serving and I know that that's got to be shared between the 75 customers that they had. So 3,840 divided by 75 equals a mean average time of 51.2 seconds. So on average, it took them 51.2 seconds per customer in the afternoon. With regards to mark allocation, you get one mark for finding the total number of minutes. You get one mark for working out the minutes in total for the afternoon and then you get an answer mark for getting the final answer. Part B is a straightforward box plot question. So for the 75 customers served in the afternoon, the least time was 18, greatest was 96, median 56, lower quarter 32, upper quarter 72. On the grid draw box plot for this information, you literally draw all the lines in and make sure you put the box in the right place. So, 18 seconds. Oh, and they've been tricky with the scale. It goes from 0 to 20 in 10 increments. So that means each one little square is worth two. So 18 is gonna be there. Then I'm gonna do 96. So that's 80, 90, 2, 94, 96. Then I'm going to do 56. 50, 2, 4, 6. Then 32. 32. Then I'm going to do 72. So 60, 72. And with a box plot, you always join the three middle ones together and then you connect the minimum and maximums to the outsides of the box and it's a three mark question you get three marks if you've got all three aspects right and by an aspect I mean the maximum and minimum is one aspect quartiles is one aspect median is another aspect so you can get one, two or three marks based on whether or not you made any mistakes there.